Welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about protocols and search strategies. Now, let's turn to develop a protocol. The focus here is particularly on the importance of having a protocol. First, it can help reduce the probability of reviewer bias by limiting the influence of reviewer expectations on the selection of individual studies or the synthesis of results. In other words, the protocol defines in advance the steps that will be followed and the criteria against which decisions will be made during the conduct of a review. Next, a protocol can provide guidance on managing a review project, including the allocation of role, mechanisms for resolving disagreements and other project schedule. Although it's important to agree and document a review design ahead of time, it is okay to modify that design and the protocol during the conduct phase. When you have a protocol, have your protocol evaluated by your advisor or an expert who is external to your team before you actually conduct a review. Your advisor or others can check the protocol against the existing review guidelines to make sure that the main elements are covered, the decisions made are justified, validation is adequately addressed, and the content is consistent. Last but not the least, the protocol should be the fundamental source for the introduction and methods in your final report of the review. You may also want to test some parts of the protocol. Now let's uh, talk about search strategies. Good search strategies will help you find as many primary studies as possible that are relevant to your research question. The likelihood is that the strategy will involve a combination of search methods. How many and what databases do you need to search? It really depends on your research question. I would say at least three databases. It's always a good idea to search for thesis, dissertations, and technical reports. If specific journals or conference proceedings are not well indexed by databases, or you are looking for book chapters or any other formats, you may have to perform manual searching. But manual searching can be very time consuming, especially when the topic of a review is broad or the topic is quite mutual. Great literature is optional. Great literature refers to non-commercial publications or materials that are produced on all levels of governments academics, business, and industry in print and electronic formats. Snowboarding is also a good strategy. There are two directions. You can check citing references and cited references. Places to look at citing references can be Scopus, Web Science, and Google Scholar. Sometimes it's important to identify ongoing studies you may have to contact relevant individuals or organizations for information about unpublished or ongoing studies. Okay, let's look at some tips for searching literature databases. The big idea here I wish to deliver is the importance of trans relating a research question into its relevant search concepts. Please make sure the search uh, question matches the search strategy. Search concepts are clear. Search concepts are not too broad or too narrow. If you get too many or too few search results, you'll probably have to revise your search concepts. When using Boolean and proximity operators, make sure syntax is correct and avoid mistakes. Search term harvesting is an important step. 
Consider using subject headings. Subject headings are a list of terms that describe the content of each item in a literature database. Searching by subject headings is the most precise way to locate articles. When using natural language or free text, consider uh, synonyms, acronyms, or abbreviations that may have the same meaning of a term. Filters may also help you narrow down your search results. Filters is a combination of validated search terms to increase retriever sensitivity. To refine research results for clinical trials, randomized control trials, filter is often applied. For more information about filters, please ask your librarian. Here is an example of how to translate a research question into its relevant search concepts. We have a research question. How effective is artificial intelligence in predicting organ transplantation outcomes? And we come up with two concepts. One is artificial intelligence. The other is organ transplantation. And under the main concepts, we also need to collect terms like uh, synonyms, acronyms, and abbreviation that are relevant to these two main concepts. We also should consider using subject headings, and the examples here are MESH terms, that is subject headings used in PubMed. Thank you for watching this video.